joining us today. Your curiosity is wonderful. And just like all of you, this is my own curiosity about nature that lets you hurt me right here at SeaWorld. We receive so many questions about killer whales each and every day from kids and grown ups of all ages. So we gathered all those questions right here in the Killer Whales Up Close to share with you today. And we can back in the book so that you'll be able to see everything up on our fitness screen. Now, if you're ready to get started, it's my pleasure to introduce you to Christine. Hi, Janet. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing today? Excellent. We're coming out first. She is 52 years old. Can we make it a small jump?
Here at SeaWorld, we have a unique opportunity to conduct research about killer whales, asking important questions that can only be answered in a setting like this. So much of what we learn here is being used to help killer whales in the wild. Of course, there are other questions that can only be explored by studying whales in the ocean. By exploring questions both at SeaWorld and in the wild, our combined research gives all of us a better understanding of killer whales and the places they live. Ha ha ha! 
All right, well, here's another really great question. Who takes care of you, Shamu? And I love that question because it lets us show all of you how much we really care about these extraordinary animals. So, Chrissy, is everyone ready? We sure are. You know, the killer whales learn to offer their tail flips. This is a very important husband behavior. You can see Corky is lining up for Chrissy. Believe it or not, she weighs in at over 8,000 pounds. So she is cooperating and participating in this important health behavior. You see, they have very large veins that run along their tail. So we can actually have our veterinarians come down and take a blood sample to ensure that our whales are healthy. Now, the slide out behavior that you'll see in a moment, although it's a beautiful example of how big and beautiful a puka is, this is also a very important behavior. Now our whales are asked this behavior in our back bowl each week so that we can weigh them. Now this helps us ensure that the, the cats are born properly and the animals are getting their appropriate food. Now the high energy behaviors such as bats, breaches, our behavior is still around too here at SeaWorld and out in the wild. Looks like Corky's going to demonstrate one of those behaviors for you. She'll make a small jump in the corner of the pool and then you'll want to focus your attention to the center. She's going to be bringing up 8,000 pounds in a behavior we call a vertical spin. Very nice, Corky. Now these behaviors ensure that the killer whales get the exercise that they need each and every day. And I know that our guests also always wonder, well, how much does a killer whale need to eat every day to stay healthy? A lot. You know, just, just like you and I, they have different dietary needs. So depending on the size and the age of the animal, we'll determine how much food that they receive. Now we mentioned Amaya earlier, who is still a calf. She's actually eating 35 pounds of fish every day. But of course, that doesn't compare to Corky, ladies and gentlemen, who eats 160 pounds of restaurant quality and sustainable fish each and every day. <laughs> and because we've been able to determine how much killer whales eat throughout different stages of their life, researchers in the fields are able to determine if ocean habitats are healthy enough for wild populations of killer whales to thrive. And that type of information is invaluable. You know, food, exercise, and food for our veterinarians are all our killer whales need. Each whale's well-being is very important to us. We want to make sure that they stay mentally stimulated. So take a look up at the big screen. You can see some examples of our toys that we make for our killer whales. We can also get them kelp out of Mission Bay. We also make them gelatin that we can form in different shapes for them. Now all of this type of enrichment helps us to develop relationships with the set. It also helps us to understand their personalities. Each whale likes something a little bit different. So what we're going to do right now is we'll see if we can get our fountains turned on for our killer whale. Now although we use these fountains in our One Ocean show later today, we also can use it as an ocean. We found that a lot of our whales really seem to enjoy this nice water massage. You can also see a video of the main stage giving the whales some of the water into their mouth. Now they just like that sensation of the water. They're not drinking it. They actually get all the water that they need from the fish that they eat. So many dead times during the day, we'll actually turn these water fountains on and let the killer whales play. As I said, they really seem to enjoy the water massage. Well, a lot of times they'll actually open their mouth because they like that sensation on their tongue.
Okay, I see a couple hands. Now raise your hands if you think that the killer whales would win. Yeah, that's right, the killer whales. You see, a great white shark hunts a whale, but a killer whale hunts the whole pod. So it's not even a competition. And you know, killer whales have even been known to hunt blue whales. You guys know how big a blue whale is? Well, at over 80 feet, it's the largest animal ever to have existed on our planet. But killer whales can hunt these huge animals because they coordinate, they collaborate, and they cooperate. Yeah, they work together as a group to overcome challenges much bigger than themselves. And you know, I think that we can learn a lot from killer whales on how to overcome challenges that say our ocean faces. Maybe if we work together, we could change the fate of the ocean. And who knows, maybe even one day the world. <laughs> All right, more questions. Oh, and here's some of those really common ones that always come in. So here we go, first question. Why do some dorsal fins curve? That's a great question. Now, dorsal fins lack any sort of skeletal support, such as bones or cartilage to support their height and weight. They're completely made up of something called connective tissue. So if an animal spends more time at the surface, over time, the tissue inside that, fin, inside that fin might weaken and the fin could bend. Now, occasionally we see these curved dorsal fins in the wild, like you see here in the photos, and here at SeaWorld. All right, next question. How fast can they swim? Well, Depending on their size and weight, killer whales can reach speeds of almost 30 miles an hour. Oh, no, 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 no. Check it out! Very impressive. Alright, next question. <laughs> How much water can their tails splash? Well, their tails, or flukes as they're called, are really strong and can fling a whole lot of water about halfway up these stands. So, time for the last question. If all of the whales splashed out once, could they get the whole audience wet? Maybe not the whole audience. <laughs> Mày đứng dương nhẹm ra
Killer whales are so inspiring. In fact, the more we learn about them, the more we see they represent more than just themselves. And surely, to better understand the killer whale is to better understand our ocean. So never stop wondering about that natural world around you. And be sure to visit SeaWorldSanDiego.com for your free download of our killer whales at close.